You know, we're over here at the CCA workbench, and every yes, we week, Hummingbird takes us off the deep end. Dave, kingfish, certainly something you know about. Well, a little bit. You know, it was probably one of the very first offshore fish I ever caught was a kingfish, you know, that and a, or a dolphin. You know, it's one of the first things you go fishing for, especially up here off the east central coast. Um, we don't have to go that far to get out to them. Uh, 80 to 120 feet of water, usually in the wintertime, even shallower than that in the summertime. In the summertime, they come all the way up close into the shore, especially the bigger ones. They'll be right up in on the pogies. But during the spring and the summer, we'll get big schools of them up, up off, you know, in 120 feet of water on little ledges and uh, any kind of wreck. Anything that'll hold bait will hold kingfish. And pretty much how we would troll for them, as, I mean, fish for them, as we would troll. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of guys like to use live baits and probably a lot more effective using a live bait, but we trolled up here a lot. So and we would, would we use a two-speed reel like this Akuma? Yeah, you can use a two-speed reel. You probably don't need a two-speed reel for any kingfish because, you know, a kingfish is a lower gear type thing and you're having to, you know, get a big fish up off the bottom or something. A kingfish, he's, he's a mackerel fish, so he's built for speed, not stamina, just like a big wahoo, you know, they're pretty good for a couple good runs and that's about it for them, you know. They got that white meat, that, you know, it's not real uh, dark red meat that can pull and pull and pull like a tuna fish can. But uh, kingfish, he's got that, that light meat, so he's good for one good long pull, and then you probably just, you know, try to get the boat to him and you get a gaff in as soon as you can, because they're really good to eat. Now, you, you're gonna have to use wire because he's, he's a member of the razor gang, they call them, the barracuda, the wahoo, and the kingfish that, that swim on our shores up here. And if you don't have wire on, you're going to get a lot of chop offs and you're going to get a lot of baits cut in half or just you know if you're using monofilament you're going to get nothing back so you learn to tie wire real quick fishing up here first off using pin rigs and you, we use ballyhoos with maybe two uh two hooks with one hook way in the back or if we're going to be using a live bait then you're going to use a, a rig like this which is a stinger rig which has a little o'shaughnessy hook up in the front right where you pin the the fish's mouth to and then you have uh, a stinger rig, which is a little short section, section of wire with a four-aught treble hook on the end of it. And, and that length varies, you know, for the pogey, which what that one you were holding is a little three-inch little stinger. But it, it the varies bigger the, the bait, size of the bait. Yeah, the bigger the bait, the further you want to get that hook back in the tail because all mackerel fish and kingfish especially, they attack the tail. That's how they live. They come and they take the tail off the fish and then they come back and get the rest. And if you've got a, a hook all the way back there in the tail, hopefully you'll get a hook in him. And that's what, that's what that second treble hook is. And usually if you put it back in, a lot of guys will put it up on the top, but if you put it right in the, in the bend of that tail, right in the middle of the fish, you have a much better shot of getting a hook in him. Because when he comes up, he's gonna, he wants to take that tail off right at the base of the tail. And if you've got a hook there waiting for him, you're going to get a hook in him, hopefully. In, either that or in his head right. or somewhere else. Because, you know, when you're using these rigs, you foul hook a lot of kingfish. Big diamond spoon? Big spoons work. We troll spoons. Diamond jig? Man, big diamond jig. We troll that thing, and kingfish love to eat it. Especially, you know, you make a good slow turn. Uh, Holiday was telling me earlier. The same thing. You make a slow turn with your ballyhoos or a jig, and they sink a little bit. Those kingfish will come up off the bait pod and nail that thing. And, you know, a big swimming plug's the same. Any kind of big swimming plug, a trembler, anything that makes a lot of noise and gets down deeper. You know, we use, we use a lot of planers out there, you know, when we're kingfishing because we're going slow already. You don't have to worry about pulling them out of the water. You're going four to five knots, you know, tops and pulling a dead ballyhoo with a double hook rig behind that, maybe a big sea witch on it. They'll catch a big kingfish or a big wahoo. And, you know, we want to catch both of those if they bite. A I wahoo like it. or a kingfish. I like it. And a lot of the times we catch wahoos because they're in there eating the kingfish. You know, a big wahoo will eat kingfish, and a lot of times we'll hook a big kingfish trying to catch a big, I mean, a big wahoo trying to catch a big kingfish. Nicely done. Well, no worries, man. Not bad for like, 300 I, times of practice. I, I don't have to talk about a permit or something I don't know nothing about.